Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. We give God glory and we give God praise. He has blessed us to see the beginning of a brand new week. And we are so glad that we have come this morning to lift up the name of Jesus, to magnify the name of Jesus. And so we invite you now to join in with us as we praise the Lord. You may not be in the sanctuary, but I know you can feel the power and the presence of the Lord right where you are. And so God is great and he is greatly to be praised. And we thank and we bless him. Father, we invoke your presence this morning. Breathe on us afresh and anew in the name of Jesus. We thank you now and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Receive the B-Top Singers. Thank <laughs> you. 
It is not based on, it is not predicated upon what we do or what we don't do. And I don't know about you this morning, but I'm glad about that. I'm so thankful and I'm so glad that the love of God can draw us and bring us to even this time, this time of prayer. Whatever it is you need, God's got it. Everything we need, God's got it. Every single thing we need, God has it and he's willing to give it to us. And so as we go to prayer this morning, we have to believe God. We have to thank God. We have to give God glory. Not just for what he has done, but for what he's going to do. How many people believe God is yet at work in your life? Oh, come on, don't fool me now. How many people really believe God is at work in your life right now? And we bless him and we praise him. Father, as we come to you, we come to you thanking you and praising you. We give you glory right now because we know that your love sent Jesus the Christ. We know that the love of God caused Jesus to Christ to hang on Calvary. We know that the love of God caused the blood of Jesus to be shed for the sin of the world. And we want to say thank you. We want to say thank you, God. We know that we could never earn it. We know that we are not deserving of it. But by your mercy, by your grace, just because you said so, you decided to send Jesus. And we thank you now. We would not be able to call upon the name of the Lord had you not sent your begotten Son, the only begotten of the Father. The scripture tells us that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. And for this, we thank you. We thank you that the Lord is in our life. In fact, we thank you that the Lord is Lord of our life. We thank you that the Lord is the center of our lives. We praise you and we bless you right now that nothing comes in our life, nothing goes out of our life that you are not in control of. We acknowledge that we are not in control. We raise our hands in surrender, surrender to your will, surrender to your plan, Surrender to your purpose. Surrender to your way. In the name of Jesus, we let go so you can move freely throughout the lives of your people. And we thank you right now. We glorify you right now. Lord, we don't understand everything that's going on, but we know that you're the only wise God. We know that you can never make a mistake. We know that you're with us despite the craziness that's going on. And we thank you right now. Look upon our faith. Families, oh God, look upon us as individuals and collectively, we pray, in the name of Jesus. We admit that we need you and we can't get along without you. And we thank you right now that you're ready and willing. We thank you that you are attentive to the cry of the righteous. We thank you right now. We bless you that you hear us when we cry out. on us. Oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Keep our minds, oh God. Keep our minds stayed on you. You said in your word that you would keep us in perfect peace if we kept our minds stayed on you. Keep our minds focused, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Oh Lord, we need you to forgive us of our sin. We need Give us of our shortcomings. Oh God, we know that we missed the mark and we know that we have a propensity to mess up. But God, in the name of Jesus, keep us, we pray. Forgive us, we pray. Wash us, we pray. Cleanse us, we pray. In the name of Jesus. Somebody, somebody has lost the joy of their salvation. Somebody is encumbered with the cares and vicissitudes of this life. Oh God, you promised to lighten the load. You said your yoke is easy and your burden is light. Touch right now in the name of Jesus. Touch right now, God. Go where we can't go. Go where we can't be in the name of Jesus. For those, oh Lord, who are being
bereft of loved ones. God, we pray for mercy. We pray for comfort. We pray for peace in the name of Jesus. Let the peace of God that passes all understanding keep all of our hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. And we thank you. Thank you for working it out. Thank you for making the way. Thank you for opening the door. Thank you, oh God, that the enemy cannot have his way with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And we bless you. Amen and amen. Come on, put your hands together. Give the Lord a clap on is sufficient no matter what you're going through no matter what doors have been closed in your face the grace of God is sufficient he is with you he is with us he will never leave us nor forsake us hallelujah I'm so glad that he said in his word that he would never leave us nor forsake us. And I praise God this morning to be in the land of the living. I don't know if you're happy to be here, but I'm happy to be here. I'm glad to be here. I'm thankful to be here. I give God glory that I'm here. I didn't have to be here this morning. You didn't have to be here, but God's not fit. Hallelujah. To let our days roll on just a little while longer. Hallelujah. And we praise God this morning. We give God glory. We're going to have a selection by our own sister Joy Ankton and we are going to praise the Lord along with her and then after that the next voice you will hear will be that of none other than our senior pastor, Pastor Jeffrey Richardson, the angel of this house, the man for this time, the man that God has chosen for this hour. And we praise God. He is anointed, he is appointed, and he has been approved by God. Sing and pray, praise along with joy as she comes, and then the next voice you will hear will be that of our pastor. God bless you. Good morning. It is a blessing to be in the house this morning. Some of you may know that I have actually gone through a lot of this, these last couple of years with grief. I've lost three sisters in less than two years. And how many of you know that depression is really real? It's real. Whether you're saved, yes. filled, whatever it is, it's yes. still, it's very real. Yes. And some mornings it is hard to get up out of the bed in the mornings. But what I do know is that God is faithful. He is faithful. So you all pray for me and with me as I sing just a verse of um, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
God will never change up on us. People might, but God will never change up on us. So hold on and keep the faith. God is able. I know that. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Joy. Something while you're still uh, in your situation, Brother Sam, Brother Sam, could you please hand me my bag? I didn't get all my stuff out this morning. I'm so used to Pastor Hughley being here, <laughs> assisting in the morning. Uh-huh. Amen. And um, we praise God for all those. <laughs> and um, thank God for his faithfulness. He and Sister Hughley are out of town this week traveling and so we thank God that they were able to get away. Amen. It's good to get away, isn't it? Yes, it is. And I can say praise the Lord for all of you that are joining here with us this morning, either here physically in this place, and many of you joining by live stream still. And remember, until we get this parking lot in, we're not doing our grand opening yet, but um, uh, until they tell us we can't, we are. <laughs> we're going to gather here and um, and uh, your uh, members of VTOP are encouraged to come Amen. and uh, be here with us physically. Get back in the habit of coming to the house of the Lord and worshiping. It's one thing to be there on the other side of the screen, but it's certainly a whole different thing yeah. being here in person. And even if you start coming back once or twice a month, that's great. But I'm telling you, um, it makes a difference. It really does. Yeah. It really does. And so we thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for your prayers, uh, for our family, and for this ministry. And as we are holding one another up, all of us are going through things. Yes. Life is happening to everyone. Yes, yes. Uh, and and uh, so we uh, must feel one another's burdens, uh, lift one another, pray for one another, stay close to one another, reach out to one another. If somebody's on your mind, you know, pray for them first, but give them a call. Send them a text. Do something. Let them know I was thinking about you. I was praying for you. Amen. You'll never know what that word of encouragement might mean to someone. Amen? Amen. Just to know that someone is thinking about you or praying for you. And thank the Lord for that. We were, well, not, I, not we, but I uh, went down, Pastor Carmen, and continued to pray for her uh, in her body. But uh, she wasn't able to make the trip yesterday, but we, I was able to make the trip down yesterday to celebrate our grandson's third birthday. And so um, I'm glad to be able to have gone down and driven down to Cleveland. That was uh, uh, about six hours of driving and then uh, three or four hours of entertaining a three-year-old. And, um, and all the presents that we got for him. And it was at Chuck E. Cheese. So it started at Chuck E. Cheese and ended at, his house, at, at their house. And uh, I got a, a whole new revelation of why it's greater to be a grandparent than a parent. And so... <laughs> <laughs> it was it was great being there, but it was good saying bye. <laughs> Amen. But it was a house full of kids, and we had a, a great time. They had a great time with Paul Paul. So uh, great to be able to go and come back. I'm going to talk to uh, you know. Last week uh, we were talking about the more excellent way, and uh, we were talking about excellent but not easy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the more excellent way, love. First uh, Corinthians chapter 13 being the more excellent way but excellent doesn't mean easy uh, the kind of love that Paul describes in 1 Corinthians is not a love that comes easy it doesn't come just because you had a big wedding um, which is why uh, I've said before and I'm going to say it again the scripture should be read two years after the wedding maybe that more applicable then than on the wedding day. All right. Because love is not what love says. Love is what it does. Love is what love does. That's right. It is not just what it says. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's why Paul says, even as gifted as you may be, Everything must be qualified by love. And in the end of that chapter, Paul says, these th three things remain. Faith, hope, and love. Yes. The greatest of these is love. It doesn't say that the others aren't great, just the greatest. Mm -hmm. Because love qualifies everything we do. Right. 
But today I want to talk about faith. I'm not sure exactly. And I told you at the beginning of this year when we talk talking about this, uh, as we're talking about this theme, um, that we're going to be talking about faith, hope, and also love. And um, today I had some thoughts uh, about faith this week as I was uh, praying and, you know, just wondering and, and figuring out how to cover all of these bases with the time that I have left in this year because we're about to go into May. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it's something how time is just keeps marching on. Yes, it Since the older I get, the faster it goes. Yes, uh, but I, I want to begin and also talk about faith and hope. I think I've also already talked about hope um, and touched on faith. But in Hebrews chapter 11, and I know that many of you are familiar with that passage of scripture if you've been uh, around church or in church any length of time. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but just some uh, selected verses. But in the beginning of the, of the uh, book of uh, Hebrews chapter 11, the writer writes, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it, the people of old received their commendation. Old, uh, King James Version said, by, by faith, the elders obtained a good report. Yeah. Uh, by faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. Mm -hmm. By faith, Abel, and it goes on to all of these examples um, of, of faith, of people in the Old Testament that used and exercised faith in their journey. Mm -hmm. Now let me go, I'm going to go to the end of the chapter. Um, um, let's see here. Uh, let's go to verse 32. I want you to read this whole chapter during this week so you'll get a clear understanding. I'm not going to take that time today. But he says, and what more shall I say? After he gives all these other examples of people that moved and walked and what they did by faith. And what more shall I say? For a time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, and David, and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, yes. escaped the edge of the sword. Somebody say the edge of the sword. Yes. Uh -huh. Were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies, uh, armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection. Yeah. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking, flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering in deserts and mountains and dens and caves of the earth, all these, somebody say all these, oh. through, all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better for us, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. Somebody just say, that because of what I just read, and I'll make more sense out of it later, just say we're connected. With those before us, and those coming after us. Verse, I'm going to read 30, verse 39 again. And all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised. King James Version says, God having provided something better for us, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. Verse Chapter 12, verse 1, and two, I'm going to read that too. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. We're talking about faith. We're talking about the, the, the three things that remain, and today we're talking about faith. And I want to talk about faith um, as, uh, as, as the, from the perspective of the person that is actually walking by faith, you and me. Those that are engaged in a walk of faith. 
not a talk of faith. Come on. Um, there is a movement called the faith movement, and um, and much of the faith movement is um, centered on what people say. Um, you know, um, confess it, possess it. Uh, it's about the words of your mouth. And and listen, I am not discounting what comes out of your mouth, the words of your mouth. But faith is more about a witness of how you walk, not how you talk. Because you confess things with your mouth, you can say things with your mouth from the time the sun comes up to the time the sun goes down, and even in the midnight hour. But if your walk is not engaged, your talk doesn't matter. We know that just by daily living with people. Many people talk good, but can't follow up with action. And the only way to obtain a good report from God is that you obtain it by how you live, not just by how you talk. What decisions you are making when it counts. And not just the decision, but then the follow through. By faith, Abraham. By faith, a uh, 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 um, Abel. By faith, Joseph. By faith, Joshua. By faith, Sarah. By faith, Samson. By faith. What did they do? You go back to the stories. They just didn't stand on top of a mountain and talk. They actually put, uh, well, not them because cars, when I was about to say rubber to the road, but they didn't have cars back then. Hoof to the road, I'm not no that's the animal they want. They actually engaged with actions that matched what they believed. To believe is then to do, to believe is then to obey, to then to believe is then in to engage. And so there's certain traits that I want to talk about today as I open this up. Um, that that are evident in the life of a person that is actually walking by faith. He Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13, these things, three things remain. These are the things that are that what you have at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. These are the things that remain. Mm -hmm. Your money may not remain. Yes, right. Sometimes your reputation may not even remain. My some of these, did you hear what he said? Some were sawn asunder. Mm -hmm. Some were tortured Lord God. to death. Mm -hmm. And at the end of their life, he says, they died in faith. Mm -hmm. Now the report of those that saw that or witnessed that or heard about that would have said, I don't want that kind of faith. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. But not all of them received compensation in this life. So, the first thing that I want to bring to your attention is that when you are walking in faith, it means you are willing. Somebody say willing. Willing, willing is not just a, 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 a noun, or a, but it's also a verb. It's a verb and a noun. I am willing. That's a frame of mind. I am willing. But I'm also willing. I'm, I'm, I'm actively engaged in what I'm willing to do. I'm willing and I'm also willing. I am in a state, but I'm also in action. I must be willing to engage the task at hand. The issue, you see, faith doesn't just sit at home. Mm -hmm. Amen. Faith isn't always in pre-contemplation. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, and then contemplation. I'm thinking about doing it. Now I'm thinking about thinking about doing it. <laughs> and now I'm thinking about what might happen if I do it. Think about now. I'm thinking about the ramifications of what might happen if I do it. Just keep thinking about it. 
It's a good thought. I'm, 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 in my mind, it's, I'm willing, but I'm not willing. Faith gets you out of that contemplation and about all of the thinking, get mired in all of the facts that are before you and strikes out like Abraham and leaves his place, leaves his home, not for a sure thing, but on a word from God that I'll show you when you get there. That's why it's called the father of the faith. That's why the Bible says he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Uh, because if he could take that step, then he could believe God that at, what, almost 100 years old, he was going to become the father of many nations through one child. My God Almighty. That, uh, uh, it's, it's faith means I must be, I, I, I am sometimes amazed at how many people get comfortable in church circles that only come to church but aren't willing to engage their faith outside of the church. Mm. Okay. Because we're waiting to have everything we need. Wow. We're waiting for all of the ducks to line up in a row. We're only willing if there are certain guarantees. Jesus. But that's not faith. Faith is an, assur is an assurance. Faith is a conviction that I have. The thing that the, that that what I'm engaged in is worth it, yeah. and I'm willing to pay a cost, pay a price, take the time. Uh -huh. Lord Jesus. Many people do not want to engage in things without some kind of guarantee mm -hmm. that I'm going to get a return for it. That's true. In a in a in a in a really um, um, you know. Packaged period of time, eh? uh, you know. Well, I'll give it three years. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but see, when you engage in faith, you're willing to go in for the long haul by faith, by faith, by faith. But what, one of the examples is Moses. By faith, Moses left the lap of luxury in Egypt. Yes. Uh huh. No guarantee. He didn't even know he was going to get back. At that time, God hadn't told him, you were the deliverer. You're going to go back and deliver right. my people. He went on and lived away from Egypt for 40 years. He gave up that. He gave up the trinkets. He gave up the, I, you know what? Sometimes when I'm looking at these stories and I'm thinking, uh, were y'all crazy? But they weren't. Sometimes you have to be willing or accept the fact that sometimes the way up is first down. Sometimes the way to gain is to first lose. Sometimes to understand your purpose, you have to give up the trinket you're holding on to now. You have to willing to let go to grab hold. Yeah. Willing. Somebody say willing. willing. Not just in the mind, but then to engage in the actions. Next, you have to be willing <laughs> and understand the wandering season. Faith is not just about leaving a location. We're talking about Abraham and others that the Bible talks about leaving where they were, leaving where they were physically. It's not just about leaving a location, but about moving from a mindset. Help us, help us today. Hmm, I'm going to pause there a minute. Just because you move from Detroit down south don't mean things are going to change for you. Mm -hmm. Location may change, but if you have it, okay. you're probably going to run into the same. Now, there are people that have done better by moving away from certain locations. Mm -hmm. But along with that, many times, you actually have to make adjustments wherever you go. That's right. So you're also willing to understand that as I'm going, and, 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 I, and I'm going to open this, this up just a little further, that there is usually 
attached to a person that's walking by faith, a season where you're, you're wandering, not wondering, but wandering, yes, sir. not exactly sure where you're going to end up. But when you are wandering, it, it can be very easy to assume that nothing's happening. That's where the children of Israel got messed up when they were in the wilderness wandering. But God was trying to work something out of them. And most of them in that generation weren't willing to give up. They left Egypt, but their mindset did, never changed. And it was during that time when God was trying to prove them and get murmuring and complaining out of them. It wasn't wasted time because you really can't take old mindset into new locations. So wandering isn't just about leaving and just mindlessly, so to speak, going through circles and going through motions but about moving from a mindset. In the wandering season, the spotlight is on you. Your mindset. You see, <laughs> oh, somebody, somebody's not going to like me, and I don't know who this is for. I'm not even going to look up. I'm not talking about anybody in the sanctuary, I don't think. <laughs> but wandering is about where you're spending your time. What in your mind, what are you spending your time on? Many times when it seems like nothing's happening, we find things to do. We're looking for things to do other than the thing we're actually supposed to do. Okay. Come on. So many a lot of times folks spend their time trying to get a boo. When God put you in that season for you to work on you. So you can be the right kind of boo. We look at seasons of wandering and then we squander the time that was meant for us to grow, us to develop, us to be cultivated. Faith takes you through wandering seasons where it looks like nothing's happening. That not only happens, it happens for individuals, but it can happen in a marriage. It can happen in other relationships. David is a king. But before he's enthroned, he's in a cave. That's right. He's on the run from somebody who's trying to take his life. He's under threat of death, but he is the anointed king. Right. It's a wandering season where it doesn't look like anything is happening in line with what God said, with what he knows is in him. Yes. But many of us, my brothers and sisters, are sometimes in life in places where it seems incongruent with what we know is in us. And sometimes it looks like the time has been so long, but you're not alone. If you would just look in the word and see the people that God many times uh, on the other end of it, what we're looking at is, is, is David once he's on the throne, yeah. once, he's, once he's in the palace. But yeah. look at the years uh -huh. getting there. Mm -hmm. Look, trouble in his house own son rose up against him. So much going. Miss, he made some blunders during wandering seasons. But there, it's during those times when God exposes the things in us that we need to work on so that when other doors open, we're prepared to go through them. Nothing is worse and this is what I think. You know what? I, I, I used to really fuss, and sometimes I will admit, let me be transparent, I still get frustrated with some things that the God makes me wait for. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm much better than I was. Mm -hmm. Much better than I was. Mm -hmm. 
But I ain't over there. And Connie, I ain't all the way there yet. There are times I have my fits behind closed doors because it's just taking too long. Why am I going through this? Again. I've been here before. Why? What what did not do last time? What what did I miss? That I have to go around this bin again. Uh, 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 when, when Moses is with the children of Israel, uh, uh, the majority of those years are around one mountain. He said, you've circled around this mountain long enough. It was over 30 years in the same area. Uh, uh, if, if you really want to know the truth, they had they had they had ticked off God by doubting Him so many times. He said, "Y'all aren't the ones going. I'm going to wait till y'all die off and take in a new generation because you don't know how to change your mindset. You got to have a new mindset. Sometimes God is killing off stuff during the wandering season." It's not that nothing is happening. A whole lot is happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I want to tell you that the journey of faith is about being willing, but it also includes wandering. It includes seasons and times when it looks like nothing is happening. I know that sometimes being on the treadmill of life is not the funnest thing. When you're doing a lot of working, but the scenery is not changing. But sometimes, even in business, even, even in, in relationships, it is the slow, steady work of consistency that gets you to the goal. It's not fanfare every day. It's, it's not Fourth of July every day. And sometimes we are not, I, I, let, me, let me not say we, sometimes I am perplexed. Yeah. as to why it seems I'm in a wandering season but I've lived long enough to know because of things God has done before that every time I've been through a season like that God always um, and listen and let me let me just be very transparent I'm going to give you a story and when I was in Cleveland uh, pastoring uh, our first pastorate that we were going through a very frustrating time um, because it was my first pastorate I had so much uh, 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 so much passion and, and so much drive to, to see the church that we were right in the in the heart uh, in, like in, in the in the hood we were in the city uh -huh. and I, I just had a vision and I used to see the church swelling in the middle of the neighborhood. And I would have that was my vision. I saw it just busting at the seams, and and it was it was this center for people in the neighborhood, and this in the like a four block radius of the church, and it was just and and let me tell you something. My bubble got bursting. <laughs> because I didn't have cooperation from people I needed co cooperation from, and I got frustrated. And one of the times I was very, very low frustrated, it was in the middle of a blizzard that had hit that weekend. We couldn't have church, but the power at our, our house went out. And we went and drove in the snow to the church to take showers. That's right. And while at the church, the phone rang. Talk about the devil. It was a call from Florida, Aunt Connie. Tampa, Florida, on a snow day in Columbia. Your name came up. We want you to come down here and consider, you know, coming down, being pastor down here on a snow day in Cleveland. And in my mind, I called. I called Pastor Reed. I called Bishop Reed. go down there if you want to, but if the Lord ain't said. Because it's, it was like, I'm wandering here, but that would be some good direction. <laughs> South. I needed to stay there. 
I needed to stay there and watch God move. And in the time, there was another time, another call, call, church call, uh, church call. It, it, we, we went in 1992, another church called in 1996, and I really wanted to leave then. <laughs> it was a city, and it was a city not far from where I was. And I was entertaining it. And I drove up there before I was supposed to preach. They, they had set up the day. I drove up there. They didn't know, they didn't know I drove. I drove up on an off day during the week. Went to the church, sat in the parking lot. I said, mm, this could work. I'm trying to get out of a wandering season to give my own self-direction. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me, not in the audible voice, but the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you can leave this church in Cleveland and come to the church in Cleveland in Pittsburgh. Wow. I started my car, went to Red Lobster, ate a lunch, said, let me get my hips back on to Cleveland and learn the rest of what I need to learn right there. But it was in the years 96 to 2000 that God brought pillars. That God raised up pillars in the church. Oh my God. That God developed relationships during that time that are with us to this very day. Sometimes the wandering season, more is happening than what you can realize. Faith is about being willing. Faith accepts the fact that sometimes I will be wandering. But the spotlight is on me, not just to take these steps and take this journey and it doesn't mean anything. There's meaning in every day, every moment yes. that you are walking in faith. Even when it doesn't seem anything is, anything is happening. A lot of times we can read over stories real quick. Not realizing the time that it took. And the way that these people's lives developed in what they went through. But faith is also about knowing you win. Mm -hmm. My God. Mm -hmm. And the win, I like the word, the, the, the I-N of win. The win is in you. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an attitude of trust Thank that you. guides your behavior through turbulent storms. Yes, I'm going to say that again. It's an attitude of trust mm -hmm. that guides my behavior. Somebody said it guides my behavior that guides my behavior through turbulent storms and conflicting situations in life. My God. An attitude of trust means that I know that I win even when I'm going through turbulent storms and conflicting situations in life. Yes, Lord. In a conflicting situation right now, but I know that I win. A conflicting situation. Got a building, need a parking lot. That's a conflicting situation. Yes, yes. But I win. Yes. It's an attitude of trust when everything hasn't yet panned out. Everything is not yet perfect. Everything Come is on. not yet lined up. Oh my God. Oh my God. Is anybody in here in a place where everything's not quite lined up? Yes, 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 yes. A, a few things are happening great over here, but there's a whole lot that needs to be done over there. And I'm in between and between. But my faith is an attitude of trust. That what I've already invested is not a loss. So that I don't give up. Because I know that I win. That was good for me. It's an assurance and it's a conviction that must guide my behavior when things aren't quite like I want them or need them. I still trust. I'm glad that he, that's why he says we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Some of them got what they wanted while they were alive. And some of them died in the faith knowing that it wasn't for them, it was for somebody after them. Oh my God. Can we stop thinking it's all about us? 
I'm here and I'm where I am because someone invested generations before me. I am the perfection of their faith. In fact, everybody sitting in here had an ancestor somewhere who suffered for a generation that was to come. We are in a time when nobody wants to go through anything. Suffer. I am not my ancestors. We know that. We Oh, we know you're not your ancestors because you can't take nothing. Your, your program, your favorite TV program gets interrupted by a special announcement and you have a fit. They call them first world problems. We fall apart with first world problems. You go to the restaurant and they used to take, they used to take reservations and now you gotta wait two hours. What? Your whole week is wrecked. Because they took your favorite food off the menu. Lord have mercy. We know you're not your ancestors. But a person that is a winner understands that even though, no, okay, a winner. I, I can remember when I was taking off weight and part of the regimen of the plan after I had my surgery was that you, they, you needed to work out about four or five times a week. And I can remember when I first started, I really did not feel like going to that gym. But I wanted to win. There was a winner in me. And then it became a habit. And then, then, then what would happen is I would recognize that I always felt better after. Yes. I did it not before and not during. Amen. But after Amen. I was through with a session. I remember one time Pastor Carm bought me a gift for Father's Day. She was doing a hint, hint message. She, 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 she bought me eight weeks of personal training. And every time I went to the personal trainer, we're good friends today. Why? I said, she's mad at me. <laughs> this ain't no gift. This ain't a, a gift is a vacation. A gift is a cruise. A, a gift is a barbecue pit. It's not sessions with a personal trainer who's trying to kill you. <laughs> I ever thought I was wandering. Uh -huh. But over time, I added to the eight weeks. Uh -huh. The eight weeks turned into six months and 104 pounds lost. All right. All right. It didn't seem right at the beginning. It didn't uh -huh. feel right at the beginning. Yeah. But on the other side, didn't happen in six days, it took six months. Yeah. Who am I talking to? Yeah. Faith is about having a winning attitude that keeps you. What kept Joseph once he was sold into slavery? What kept him in Egypt? There was something inside of him, a winning attitude. Yeah. It's not about what you say, it's about what you do. I know somebody's trying to tell you how to get out of things real fast. Just speak to the mountain. Mm -hmm. Tell it to move. How many times, how many times have y'all spoke to your weight or whatever problem you were going through and it didn't move? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 Spoke to your bad attitude. I just want this bad attitude to move. Well, unless you move it. Okay, Amen. <laughs> it's about waiting. It's about being willing. Somebody, faith is about waiting, being willing. It's about wandering. It's about having the win the attitude. And then it's realizing there's a great cloud of witnesses. And guess what? I'm a witness in the making. You see, there are people that are in the Bible, but then there are people in my life that are my witnesses. 
There are folks that I have seen in my life, mothers, fathers, aunts and uncles, and I say that because I was raised in a church and I was raised in a community where everybody that wasn't blood, it didn't make, it didn't take us to be blood related for me right. to say that's my auntie, right. that's my uncle. I call somebody else my mom, who's not my mom. Right. Because they were my witnesses. Yes. They were people that saw things in me, and then every now and then they would share with me stuff that was important to them in their lives at a certain time that helped me. What can you tell somebody else? What can I tell somebody else about my life that would make a difference in theirs? You see, that's what the walk of faith is about. It's not just about you. It's about what I can pass on. Who I talked about it what was what, 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 I think it was on Easter. Who for the joy that was set before him, there was something in it for somebody else, not just for me. Amen. These things, three things remain. First one he says is faith. Faith means I'm going to learn how to wait for some stuff. I'm going to be willing. Yes, God. I'm going to accept the fact that sometimes life has wandering seasons. I don't know why I keep coming back to that. I'm, I'm, I'm just about through. But there's someone who is in a wandering season. It doesn't look like anything is going on. Uh, baby, the spotlight's on you. God is saying, in this wandering season, it's not just about where you are. It's about what it needs to be happening inside of you. You're not wasting time when you focus on what you need to be doing for you. You wait for somebody else to change, and God's saying, no, you're the one. And during this time, I want you to make some changes. There's someone who is stuck, needs to get to the next level, and you want to get there real fast. You just want to be done with whatever this dry season is. Yeah, yeah. I've learned that dry seasons have a purpose. Sometimes somebody else is the hold up. My God. And God just wants you to be faithful in the meantime. And other times God is doing something in you because you have too much impatience. Mm -hmm. Because if my faith is not working right, it's going to affect the way I love. That's good. That's real good. The greatest of these is love. And if my faith is not right, my love's not going to be right. That's good. Faith is like a foundation. He that comes to God must first believe that he is and that he's a rewarder, rewarder of them. See, that's, a, that's, that, that's the thing that lets me know that I'm a winner is because God is a rewarder of those who walk in faith. That's just my opening. That's just my opening. I'll get deeper. But that's just my opening. That's enough for today. Faith realizes that I'm going to have to wait for some stuff. And still be assured and have a conviction that God is a rewarder of them that walk in that way. I can wait. It's the hardest thing to do sometimes. Is to wait and not make hasty moves. Try to help God's hand out. There's enough for us to take care of in our own personal business. There's enough for us to take care of in our own personal lives. There's, a, there's an agenda that we haven't even touched because we wait for God to move over here. And God said, look, oh, this is something done over here. Sometimes I'm going to be wandering. And it's going to feel like nothing's happening. The drudgery of every day life. What is it? All I'm doing is just pay the bills. All I'm doing is uh, pay the bills. Mm -hmm. On time, get your credit straight. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's I, right. I can get through many amens over that. That's right. That's right. 
Amen. Get, get your credit straight. Yeah. What about that? Why you want it? Why? Because when that door of opportunity comes, you're going to need some things to be in order. Amen. Don't get caught with your work undone. Because during a dry wandering season, you weren't on your best behavior. Or your best conduct. Or your best planning. Preach, Pastor Jeff. Get yourself right before you invite somebody else into a cluttered life. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to be two cluttered lives. Mm -hmm. Trying to be each other's answer. Lord, that was a good one right there. Lord. And understand that the wind is in you. There's an attitude of trust that guides you through turbulent storms and conflicting situations in life. And that I'm surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. And that I'm a part of somebody's great cloud Amen. of witnesses. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You've given to each of us a measure of faith. My faith looks up to thee. God, there are seasons and there are situations and circumstances in life that require that require me to have the faith that doesn't just move mountains, that explosive faith that tells everybody, wow, you have faith. No, the, the faith that's most important for me is the faith to, to keep myself right. Hmm. The elders obtained a good report from God because of how they walked in their faith, in their everyday life, how they faced everyday challenges. How they faced everyday enemies. How they went through their wandering seasons. How they went through their seasons of betrayal. How when they went through the seasons when they were mistreated. How they went through uh, seasons when things were not optimal. When things weren't working out. Not over days, not over weeks. Many of them and most of them over years. They are in the roll call of faith. May we not get so caught up in this American culture that we think that the gospel becomes Americanized. That the work that you're doing on us comes packaged <laughs> in American dressing. Help us, God, to know that a nation's culture and your culture could be at odds. And that while everybody's involved in their rat race, you've called me to a race that's not about how fast I can get over on somebody else. But it's about how true I can be to who you called me the gifts that you've given me, the skills you've given me, and that I can engage a life that's not in competition with anybody else. But if I'm the best me, I'll be successful Amen. in the things that are for me. So I'll be willing to wait for some stuff. I'll be willing to stay steadfast during wandering seasons and understand that there's something you're trying to work out in me. I will understand that I have win in me. Not give up. And help me take the encouragement of the witnesses that have gone on before me, the ones that are here in my life right now, and the witness you're making out of me. And this will thank you for. Yes, Lord. And praise you for. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Somebody, want, somebody want to have that faith walk. That says God rewards me at the end of this. And he rewards me not just personally. But he rewards those that are watching me. Because I then become a witness. I'm going to deal with that some more. Somebody give God praise and thanks for your walk of faith. It's not in vain. It's not in vain. It's not in vain. 
it's not in vain. You got something to hold on to. Well, thank the Lord for another time of worship together. I'm not going to call Pastor Carmen up here because I do not want to um, um, stress her out. She's come up these steps enough, and y'all continue to remember her in prayer. Uh, please, re please refer to your email blast. We send out every every week to let the saints know to be apprised of everything that is going on uh, in the church right now. Um, thank the Lord. Let's pray for wisdom for those that are leading the. Pastor Carmen and I, the Board of Elders, uh, uh, Sister Geneva, uh, who handles our finances, that we have wisdom and how to, to, to do what we need to do to make sure everything is covered. Thank God we ain't been behind on anything. Amen. Oh, that's a wonderful thing. Amen. We ain't behind on nothing. And I, it's, because, it's because of your giving. And I really do appreciate everything that you are all doing, especially during this time and this season. Pastor Carmen and I are sacrificing. I'm doing, let me tell you something. I'm doing everything that's within my power to make sure that this church becomes uh, founded and grounded. Amen. Amen. Everything that I can do. And um, it is a part of my assignment. And I thank the Lord uh, that we are actually getting there. Yes, we are. Yes, yes, we are. We we ain't where we are six years ago. We're, we're not where we were six years ago. Amen. Five years ago. Amen. Amen. We were one that God God provided the place, and now He's gonna do the rest. Amen. And even though it seems sometimes I feel like I'm in the wandering season. Did you hear where I said that? I know that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him, Amen. and everything we need is already supplied. And I speak that not only for us, but I speak that over your life and in your house. All righty. Let's look to the Lord. And remember all the ways to give that are, are, are there uh, 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 in the stream uh, and uh, even on the email blast. Uh, we appreciate, I want to, all those that are looking by live stream to know. I, we, I get that report. We see uh, that report when any of you all use PayPal, Cash, Cash App. We get those uh, those notifications. Many of you are not even members, but you support not just from here, but all over this country. People are sending it off. I really want you to know how much I appreciate that. And, and that, lets, that encourages me to know that we're on the right track and that God's people are everywhere. God's people are everywhere. And I want you to know how much... I appreciate that. Thank you for helping us as we are going on this journey. Pastor Carmen and I are praying for you. When we see your names, we thank God for you, and we are praying for you. Father, thank you now for this day. Thank you for the time that we've had together. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us and making us a blessing. Thank you for those that, have, uh, that are here physically uh, in this building and for those that are watching and joining us by live stream. Strengthen us, not only this day, but this week, for all the tasks that are at hand. May we, may we consider your word to us today, this week, that it takes faith to please you. Without faith, it's impossible to please you. May we question ourselves and ask ourselves, what am I doing that requires faith? Because that's what pleases you. And so I thank you, Lord. I thank you for those that will engage in a healthy walk of faith. And that's not just about what they say, but it's about what we do. And it's a behavior of the winner. It's the attitude of the winner that lasts through wandering seasons, through dry seasons, through seasons uh, that are challenging. Our faith will meet the challenge and you will reward us and bring us through on the other side. And thank you for that. The witnesses are there to testify that that's exactly how you work. And so thank you, God. We praise you now in Jesus' name until we meet again. Amen. And amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. You're dismissed. And for those that are, are online, we'll see you at the next appointed time. Remember, on Tuesday nights, uh, Bible study with Pastor Carm, a scripture a day, keeps depression at bay. Right? Yeah. Amen. I wanted to make sure I got it right. Pastor Carm will be with us on Tuesday night uh, on live stream. God bless you, and we'll see you next week.